Well, we have issues in our watershed with uh, extreme events where we're getting a uh, runoff and we're having flooding issues, but we also know that the quality of water coming off of some of these developments, uh, whether they're new developments or old developments, are really impacting the quality of water in the Thames. So we were really looking at, there's got to be some new ways of doing things where we can do some treating stormwater as though it's a resource, and that's what low impact development's all about. It's about treating water like a resource and treating it where it falls, rainfall where it falls. And that's really what uh, the basis is of all of the LID green infrastructure projects. This is a dry bioswale, so the function of this swale is to allow water to flow over top of it and then the mulch topsoil mix will absorb a lot of soil a lot of it will infiltrate directly into the soil. Below that there is a layer of rock, clean stone and a perforated tile that excess water will drain into if, if that much water gets into the system. So it gives it that flexibility to, to handle an excessive amount of water. The nice feature of that is there's never standing water on the site. Um, the mulch topsoil mix will hold a lot of water, um, but it'll always be dry and accessible for, for looking after it in, in the way the, the owner wishes to, to maintain it. Uh, the plantings themselves, it's a combination of wildflowers and, and small trees. Um, they're drought tolerant, uh, they're drought tolerant flowers that uh, can withstand prairie conditions, so they don't need a lot of maintenance once they're well established. They'll be mulched fairly heavily, so the moisture that does get into the area will, will stay into the area and be able to be utilized and, and grow the flowers. Uh, it's a variety of colors and sizes that should, should be appreciated very much by the owners. And the trees are, are smaller trees, some of them fruit-bearing trees, again, that they will attract birds and wildlife, but they also flower and have a great appearance. We're thrilled to be able to have this opportunity to do this. Um, we, like everybody else, just try to think a little bit outside the box. Less, you know, concrete, less pipes, like everyone's saying. Um, this is such a beautiful setting we have here, and we wanted to do everything we could to not disrupt it. Um, so this is just a great, great way for us to do that. And so it's, it's nice when you kind of do something different, so mm -hmm. re-look at things again. Um, like I said, we're so used to doing things the old way or the traditional way mm -hmm. and uh, it's not a lot of times where you get an opportunity to have a client that's going to let you kind of explore some other options. We've got native wildflowers and grasses, 1800 native wildflowers and grasses of a variety of species and everything from big blue stem and little blue stem grasses to butterfly milkweed, which will attract the butterflies, especially the monarch, sky blue aster, flower in the fall, and prairie smoke, one of my favorites that shows actually like little puffs of smoke in the springtime. So we've got a variety, black-eyed Susan or brown-eyed Susan, a lot of people are familiar with that plant too. I think once everything all fills in, it's going to be beautiful and it's, it's such a nice spot and it's so nice to just keep it natural. Mm -hmm. We're very thankful for everyone for thinking outside the box, for helping us work away at this and you know there's a few bumps in the road but everyone just kept you know pushing forward and how lucky we are to be able to have this kind of an opportunity.